Hi, this is Robert Tay from GBit Games and the GBit channel on YouTube. What I have here today is a Nintendo Virtual Boy. This was released back in the mid-90s, and due to price and a lack of initial third-party support, the device did very poorly. In fact, there were no more than a million units sold worldwide, and that includes fines in various warehouses and shipping containers over the past few years. Now due to the short lifespan of the device, it never had more than two dozen licensed titles. Now what I'll be doing today is showing you a quick tutorial on how to fix the glitchy LED arrays on these devices. The original Game Boy has a similar problem, and it's easily fixed. This one, you got to be a little more careful, because if you permanently damage the LED array, you'll have to find a replacement, and those aren't easy to come by. You can find one on eBay for about 30 bucks by themselves, but they're not always on there. Now the reason why I'm showing this tutorial is because there are several videos floating out online that show that you should bake these LED arrays. Now I do know that this does work for a short time. However, the steps I'm going to be showing you are a lot safer and seem to be a lot more permanent. Now these devices aren't hard to take apart, but there are a couple tools you will need. One, it's a Phillips screwdriver. You're going to need it to be longer than usual, but also with a small head. I would use a magnetic one, although use caution as there are some magnetic components that can be damaged in the process. Now the second one is not a common tool, but you can rely on eBay to have this one. It's a Nintendo Inverted Torque Security Bit. I would try to find a listing that mentions the Virtual Boy. Even if you happen to have one of these bits in your toolbox, chances are it's not going to be long enough nor small enough to fit these holes. Now I've seen these things for as high as 15 and as low as 2. The one I purchased was about $4 with the shipping included. I don't recommend trying to make your own out of plastic, as there's going to be so much force needed to loosen these screws. Now what I have here is a repair unit that is now fully functional. Now when I got this, the right display was completely non-functional. I've seen many videos online showing how these things can be very glitchy, partially unresponsive. However, in my case, I had one side that didn't work at all, and the other side worked perfectly. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you the same steps that I used to repair mine. First, the easy part, opening it up. Now there are plenty of videos out there on how to take these things apart. Really, once you get the screws out, it's self-explanatory. The only thing you need to watch out for is keeping track of the screws. If you happen to lose one of the screws, you can replace it. However, the device does have moving parts, and if turned on while a screw is left inside, it can cause irreparable damage to the mirrors, possibly the LED arrays as well. Once everything's been taken apart, if you look on either side of the eyepiece, you'll see a small PCB board with a ribbon attached to it. This is what we want to take out of the system. You'll find one for the left and one for the right. Now I have one here that has been completely damaged, and I just want to show why baking it is not a good idea. If you look closely, you can see that there's a clear plastic cover over the LED arrays. If baked in the oven, the hot air will actually cause this plastic piece to warp and create a distortion in the image as you're playing the video game. There's two screws keeping those PCB boards in place. And once those are unscrewed, all you have to do is detach the ribbon cable, and it comes completely free. There should be a white tab attached to the end of the ribbon cable. There's no clamp to remove. All you gotta do is slide it out. I would, however, recommend that if you're not having problems with one side, to leave it alone. Now, you had the ribbon cable, and from this point on, this is all we'll be dealing with. What you'll want to do is go to your kitchen and set your oven for 350 degrees. You will want to let it complete two preheating cycles. Now it's one full cycle to get it up to temperature, and the second one is simply to overcome lost heat. What you want to do is heat up the oven door. Once that's done, you'll simply put the PCB on the edge of the door and apply pressure for about 15 seconds. I actually did two sessions of this. Applied pressure, waited 15 seconds, lift it up, let it cool down, and then put it back on the door and applied pressure for another 15 seconds. Now I cleaned off the small corner of the door that I was using. 
I don't believe grease would have an adverse effect on this unless it's in excessive amounts. All you would need to do is put a little rubbing alcohol on there and wipe it off. You'll want to use the part that's at the hinge. That way, you can apply pressure without breaking the door. Once the 15 seconds is up, you'll want to simply lift it off and put it on a flat surface and apply pressure again. All you're doing is waiting for the adhesive to cool down and re-solidify. Now you shouldn't see any physical changes, other than that the ribbon cable is now a little bit more flexible and maybe it's not curling as much as it was. To test the functionality of the array, you need to plug it back into the Virtual Boy. What I did was close everything up and plug in the controller without installing the screws. That way, all you have to do is turn it on, look through the eyepiece, and see if it's still malfunctioning. If it is, repeat the same steps performed earlier. Once that's done, you should have a fully functional Virtual Boy. I performed these steps on my Virtual Boy about three months ago, and I haven't had any problems since. Well that's it! Check out my other videos, I've got some reviews out there. I plan to keep putting videos out. If you like this or any of my other videos, hit the subscribe button. At least leave a comment. Thanks for watching!